Yeah, okay. So today the first news will be um, augmented reality ads see better reception than other digital formats. Yeah, this news is um, ad week and was written by Patrick Cobb. If you are really interested, feel free to go to uh, you know uh, uh, this article and pretty much it talks about uh, um, um, like, for example, like we are trying to make a lot of ads, right? But 70% uh, says that they would like to see more ads that uh, in AR in the future, um, according to the research, which is very interesting because like uh, a recent survey from Swedish telecom company, Ericsson's mobile ads platform, EMODO, e -M -O -D -O, found nearly three quarters of customers who would be more likely to pay attention to an ad that is incorporate AR elements. That's about 70% said that they would like to see more about AR ads. And then meanwhile, research firm uh, AR Artillery Intelligence Projects found AR-based advertising a subcategory distance from other commercial applications like AR retail and gaming to be one of the most uh, um, like, like increasingly growth areas for the technology. So it's kind of estimated $2.4 billion market this year. So it seems like um, AR ads can uh, bring up more higher engagement for example, like a people, um, you know, it's around 3.79 um, higher return in ad spend over the traditional mobile display ads uh, based on location data from uh, place and uh, uh, four square, which is, you know, according to the research, people would like, like ROI or some, you know, some other marketing terms, it seems like around four times more um, return um, or, return on ad spend over traditional mobile display. Yeah, and also, uh, for example, like um, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat, it seems like uh, people really, um, you know, love, um, it, th those can really help um, people to do the buying decisions through all the social media platform. Uh, also, yeah, I, I think this is a pretty good news. And then ARS seems better recognition than other digital formats. Yeah, so any thoughts about the news or um, ideas? Yeah. Yeah, that's, um, well, it's interesting because with advertisements, you, you have to have ads. Well, you don't have to, but, but every company wants to put ads in to like obviously increase revenue. And, you know, that's just going to be part of everything we do hmm. for a long time. Hmm. Uh, but the problem is people tend to kind of filter out advertisements. So like banner ads on, on websites and just even commercials on TV sometimes like you just learn how to kind of ignore those things. So <laughs> I know companies are trying their best to try to, uh, you know, make it more engaging to try to get the, the you know, customer's attention somehow. Mm -hmm. So I think AR is a great way to do that. Um, in addition to that, I think the amount of information you can pass on, um, you know, it is huge because it's not just a 2D kind of an advertisement now. You can actually advertise 3D. Yeah. Um, like, for example, if it's, uh, you know, furniture, you can put it right in front of you and you can talk about all the different features or mm. whatever the product is. So it really makes it more engaging. But on the other part, mm. it, it also allows you to gamify the process. So yeah. anytime you can, you know, make it fun or intriguing for the customer to interact with your product, um, it makes it, again, psychologically more you know, uh, interesting to them and more likely that they might uh, buy it or find out more information about it. So, yeah, I think there's still some hurdles in that space. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, you know, when you use AR, if you're in uh, an application like Snapchat or those, mm -hmm. it's easier to do that. But if you're outside those applications, then you, you have to figure out how to get that person to to engage with the AR, you know, do they have to download an app to do it? Do they, you know, how, how does it actually work? So, yeah, I, I think there's still some hurdles in that area, but I, I agree, it's definitely going to um, um, help out in, in advertising and marketing, promoting products, so. Hmm. 
Mm, yeah, I, I I totally agree. Yeah, I mean, gamify will definitely help uh, the um, the engagement for uh, the viewers and also help out like people to you know like I I say that uh, the higher engagement will be true according to the article says right. It's because it's fun and usually people right now using internet are more young people. So if you make it fun and young people love it and uh, higher engagement, so, something like Snapchat, I, I really think that uh, I remember few, two or three years ago, back in 2019, I read an article. It seems like Snapchat is going like before their um, like mission was to do more camera company, right? They, they, they claim themselves as a camera company, but it's very interesting that um, later on, I start looking at uh, Snapchat. It seems like they change and they are going to provide, like back in 2019, they provided a lot of small game platform tools for people to kind of, uh, for advertisers to create some small games on their platform. So for example, if you go to Snapchat, you can kind of like swipe through some advertising and some of them are, you know, for example, like a pizza shooting and you need to eat a lot of pizzas, right? Like it's just like a small things and they have logos on the corner, that's it. And so you see, like, it seems like it's half, half of a game, but half of brand awareness. And since you have a lot of fun with that pizza and you think it's creative, you just think like, oh, I kind of want to eat a pizza. Why not try that brand? <laughs> yeah, so I think it's kind of tied to like uh, emotional and also, um, yeah, some interesting things happening to like Snapchat when they were trying to um, doing some of their AR ads, which is really fun. Yeah, so I don't know. And I remember one Christmas, um, like long time ago and Walmart, seems to launch their um, in-store and outside of store AR games. So I play it and I feel like I know that brand more because when I see that tiger and it appears everywhere and I start to recognize that tigers uh, when I purchase grocery. So it's very interesting once the, uh, you know, the, the user start playing uh, with the character or some, you know, inter fun elements inside ads, they remember more. Yeah. So. Yeah. And again, I think it, it's, um, it, it'll probably be more relevant when uh, web XR, you know, starts to kind of, um, you know, increase in usability. Uh, because again, you don't, you don't want people to have to download an app to mm -hmm. then, you know, utilize the AR functionality. So, you know, so just to be able to walk into a store put my phone up with the browser or the mm -hmm. camera, you know, uh, and then having to interact without having to do anything else, mm -hmm. you know, would be really useful. So, uh, so yeah, it's still, uh, I guess, work, work in progress. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh. but uh, you know, they'd be very smart to kind of, you know, <laughs> look into that type of stuff. I think. Yeah. Uh, speak of WebXR, actually, I'm going to host, now really host, like a moderator, a panel about everything gamified. Uh, related to web 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 XR and uh, um, the I think the organizer want me to find another three people to speak with me like a four people panel and he told me like he want like diverse so like for example two two women two men you know and then different colors so I I am thinking about I think you told me that you had some web XR experience right like uh, working on some yeah, yeah, not a ton. That's not my, my specialty, but mm. uh, but I did for a project we were working on, uh, actually doing VR. I had to mm. look into it to see if we could use a browser to actually oh. um, you know integrate some VR uh, content mm. uh, just for distribution um, you know purposes. But uh, mm. uh, but yeah, it's not necessarily my uh, my specialty. Um, mm. Yeah. yeah, there's so much stuff out there. Yeah, I, I, I don't know whether you are interested in speaking for an event. It's like, a, I think, a 30 minutes uh, talk panel and 15 minutes prepare. And it's around, I would say, October, October 12th, Tuesday. And I have to find another three people. So, I mean, if you are interested, I can, you know, um, 
kind of like propose you to the organizer and probably put you in. I don't know if you are interested. In. Yeah, well, uh, keep in mind, maybe, uh, yeah, if you can't find anybody before then, I can oh, okay. jump in there. But yeah, I'll, I'll uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure I can do that. So. Oh, I see. Got it. Got it. Yeah. yeah may, may, maybe if you, maybe you can ask your company first and see. Uh, and the, the event is called WebXR Developer. I can send you the, the yeah, all, all of this. Send me the information. Is that here locally or is it? Oh, uh, it's kind of, I think it, it was pretty big um, a few months ago or around May. And it was sponsored by uh, AR, VR, ARA and a lot okay. of big companies. Yeah. yeah. So all the you know, people on the stage, they show up and moderator. Uh, some panel and I, I was honored got a, a panel, a small panel, and I need to find like people who likes to talk about uh, gamification, gamify, and the panel's name is called uh, uh, gamify everything. And I think uh, the the opportunity is great because um, it will be um, like I, I think there are a lot of really cool people last time around May. Like for example, people from Microsoft, from Google, from yeah, Oculus from a lot of um, um, very, very big and pioneer company. They, they, they have their people talking about technology. And for me, I will represent Hummingbird State, <laughs> my little studio. And then, yeah, I mean, yeah. So I am looking for people to kind of uh, join me the panel. And so we can have some fun or not really bore the audience during those 30 minutes. Yeah, so that's... Kind of. Yeah, send me the information. I'll, I'll take a look. Uh, yeah, if yeah. not, there, I, I might be able to find somebody. Oh, else cool, to cool. As well, so, yeah, uh, yeah, that would be so great. I know, I know uh, our company is uh, members of the ARVR, uh, and and I think my uh, the CEO has done a couple of talks in the past. So, oh. Um, so yeah, I would definitely have to check that. And, yeah, yeah, I, I will send you more information, and uh, yeah, and. That love to you know like talk about I don't know gamification or some fun stuff because I think um, um, gamification will be a very important part in XR application. Yeah, since well, if, you, if you think about it, things like Snapchat, um, mm -hmm. you know, the face filters that mm -hmm. that that's a really really great example of gamification in, yeah. in how all that stuff works because yeah. you know it's just so much fun. You know, you're kind of showing you know your friends how it works, and you're kind of having a good time. But then all mm. of a sudden, you kind of start sneaking in advertisement <laughs> somewhere. So it, it really is a good example of how that that is, uh, you know, growing in in demand. I think so. Yeah, yeah, I I totally agree, and I think, um, yeah. So I, I and especially all the XR application currently or build uh, you know unreal or uh, unity right and those two yeah. are game um, game engines so because you see like the player right it's already if you drag something it's all called player control or something it's already you know already building a lot of stuff that already for you to make a game right so I think yeah. Yeah, so I think, yeah, gamification is kind of like right now, not many people are talking about it, but will be more and more people. So it's like a potential really good topics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Thank you so much. I will follow up with you about that. And the next news will be military kicks off the development of 5G test beds for augmented and virtual reality. And this news, uh, is on nextgolf.com and was written by Brandy Vincent. Uh, yeah, so pretty much uh, new 5G test beds uh, designed for military exper uh, experiments with augmented reality and virtual reality or AR VR training applications are beginning to deploy by Samsung and um, GBL System Corporation at US Army Base. So pretty much right now, they are trying to incorporate uh, 5G into those, um, you know, device. Uh, and they are right now testing 5G. And it seems like, um, you know, like around $600 million in contract to test out like 5G. So um, 
This distance was pre-assembled uh, in Sansong's Dallas facility in May and June for some initial uh, ver ver uh, ver ver uh, verification testing. So pretty much right now, it's still in the testing um, um, stage. So basically, this platform, uh, well, Emerge Technology stems from the effort launched by Defense Department last October. Uh, through it, multiple uh, Pentagon uh, component are working on the industry to trial out 5G for smart warehouses, AR and VR, and more at installations spinning multiple military base. GBL and Samsung were well contra uh, contracted to support uh, one of the largest projects among those selected. Yeah, so uh, it seems like right now, um, AR, VR is going to you know, put inside the uh, government furnished equipment and also um, inside a lot of Galaxy Samsung's uh, projects. So yeah, so I think it's very interesting to see like 5G and all the military device integrate uh, AR, VR base, uh, you know, all those training, all those technology, they, right now everything seems going together. Yeah, so yeah, what, 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 what's, your, what, what's your thoughts for those? Yeah, well, we actually do quite a bit of uh, work with the military and, um, and especially with the HoloLens, you know, it, it's, there's so many cases where you, you do need access to servers, you do need access to remote information. So the faster that that data is transferred back and forth, the, the better, uh, obviously. So if you're not close to a Wi-Fi or anything, mm -hmm. You know, like that 5G is, is you know, incredibly important. Um, but the other aspect of 5G, not, not even the, the military, in, in regards to you know, XR, AR, um, VR, um, is, is some of the new trends that are happening technology-wise. So I'm sure you're familiar with remote rendering. Um, and there's, there's a couple of different players out there. NVIDIA has it with... Um, their cloud XR and uh, Microsoft has it as, as well. It's called remote rendering. But basically, the concept, which is pretty genius, I think, is that instead of the actual device doing all the processing, so taking the camera feed in, making decisions about where the virtual content is going to be in your vision, uh, what happens is the camera takes the feed in, it sends it to basically the servers to process all that. You know, crunching of, of information, and then sends back a stream of what the data should look like. Um, so what that allows is allows for the devices to be smaller, uh, less processor intensive, the battery life lasts a lot longer, but you even get better output from the visual that you're seeing, uh, because you can actually send back very high res um, streaming data as opposed to you know the device that you're holding you know at, at the time doing all that that crunching, so uh, so I, I like that concept a lot. It, it gives you better uh, quality of, of virtual content, um, and because you're running it on a robust server, you can do a lot more with that data. You know, integrating AI stuff and you know, other things as well uh, that just makes the process a lot faster. But you do need a very fast connection to, to utilize that. So I, I was hoping, you know, 5G would, would come along a little bit quicker and allow for, you know, that type of, um, you know, interaction, especially if, you know, the glasses come out where we're just wearing these very small glasses. We don't have to do a lot of, you know, processing on board to, uh, yeah. you know, to get that type out. But but um, but military, I, I think everybody's going to benefit by utilizing 5G yeah. in that case. Yeah, because I, I think 5G will make make everything kind of like instantly, right? It, it, there, there is no latency. So that's why whatever you do, whatever you say will be come across immediately to your teammate or all the data will update faster. So I think, yeah, and the, the processing power will be much, I would say, powerful. So yeah, so this is definitely a really good um. Yeah, and I'm wondering why it's Samsung. Yeah, it's not <laughs> any American company is a company from Korea, which is very interesting as well. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think